in tribulation. We would rather to complain about superficial phenomena than finding the solution from history. We may trust the science and democracy, and let them manipulate our lives. Contrary, we feel more ignorant and being kept imprisoned. Powerlessness is covering us. On 14th December 2020, we welcomed a total solar eclipse. During this COVID, when the sun lost its shine, we felt hope is far away from us. We experienced a hard year 2020. However, should we deserve continuing tragedy in 2021? Are we really now in the darkness? If looking outside is useless, do we need to calm down and look inside? Maybe the answer is in our memory, like solving the mathematical problems. We abandon emotion, you know, human error, for temporarily to see the truth. People in Milan, 1485, were also in darkness. For the Black Death, the deadliest pandemic in human history, was shattering the poor, panic lives. Leonardo da Vinci witnessed this tragedy at the time and described the unique celestial phenomena of the total solar eclipse in his. Manuscript. Giovanni Boccaccio described this tragedy in his book, The Decameron, as this: Many ended their lives in the public streets during the day or at night, while many others, who died in their homes, were discovered dead by their neighbors. Only by the smell of their decomposing bodies, the city was full of corpses. Moreover, the dead were honored with no tears or candles or funeral mourners. In fact, things had reached such a point that people who died were cared for as we care. For goats today, so many cops would arrive in front of the church every day, and at every other, that the amount of holy ground for burials was certainly insufficient for the ancient customs of giving each body its individual place. When all the graves were full. Huge trenches were dug in all of the cemeteries of the churches, and into them, the new arrivals were dumped by the hundreds, and they were packed in these with dirt, one on top of another, like a ship's cargo, until the trench was filled. After Venice. And Pisa being taken by this horrible plague, Florence implemented strictly regulations to avoid the spreading of Black Death. For instance, each citizen had to be notified; crews had to be put in quarantine for forty days; ferries and ships. With infected, was prohibited to release a cruise to land. This quarantine is the earliest and most integral policy to defeat plagues in Europe. Let's review this perfect policy. Eighty percent lives in Florence were taken by the plague. Obviously. 
explorers failed to escape from the disaster. Contrary, it had the highest number of deaths in Italy. It is said that the corruption of clergy and the moral declination of human caused the plague. Catholic Church and popes became to be more like political roles rather than religious roles. At the very beginning of the belief, it was a pure belief, a religion. That led the people into a spiritual peace and salvation. As the credit accumulated, the clergy's avarice was also nourished. The clergy's misbehavior violated the vows of purity they have taken. God had never changed, while his messengers betrayed him. They misinterpreted the meaning of Bible for their own good. They created the pardon card to collect the money and misled the faithful people. Consequently, they were the true sabotage to the links between God and human. The immense wealth of church accrued through tithes and lavish gifts. Only inspired a desire for even greater wealth, which translated as power. An archbishop could, and frequently did, threaten a noble, a town, or even a monastery with excommunication for any reason. Under suffering, people no longer believe in God. And maybe this is a reason why God lost the confidence in man. Art is not only an aesthetic pleasure, but also a reflection of the history and the time. The masters of Renaissance opposed the authority of church, and the interpretation of this clergyman, but. They never turn against God. They tried to heal faithful hearts to rethink and embrace God. Eventually, make them feel the benevolence of God again. Their arts recorded a moral issue like Borchwerk, death, and miser. A skinny dying miser is struggling in bed. Death manifests lots of its forms, intruding this poor miser's room. Behind the door, around his bed, in and out the cabinet. At this last moment of the life, merciful God appeared at the window above. His light shines down upon the miser, a worried angel. Sits at the nearest position to him, and holds him, encouraging him to pray to God for salvation. However, the only thing that he cares is money. He stretches his hands uncontrollably towards a money bag in Dad's hands near the bed. He knows that. If he fails to resist the temptation of money, he will be taken by death at the door. What a dramatic scene! Lord, never, ever abandon the people, while the people choose to turn against the Lord and let him down. Now, COVID nineteen undermines everything in our lives. The education systems failed to work in right direction. Small and medium enterprises went bankrupt. Social security was challenged. The righteous universal value was abused. We see all this chaos, but 
I made his cruise behind them. The cruise is the COVID-19 is only an excuse for a big scheme. The Great Reset is behind it. This Great Reset carries in its vows to fulfill its desire on the expense of our lives. There will be no more liberty, conscience, or thought in any countries in future. Actually, this Great Reset had already begun in quite long times ago. One world order is the ultimate goal for the Illuminati. The Illuminati trace their origins back thousands of years to their conception as a result of the genetic inbreeding between the reptilian extraterrestrial race and the humanity. Their modern origin, however. Traces back to the 1760s and a man named Adam Weishaupt, who defected from the Catholic Church and organized Illuminati, financed by the international bankers. Since then, according to the Illuminati, their top goal has been to achieve a one-world government. And to subjugate all religions and governments in the process, the Illuminati thus attributes all wars since the French Revolution as having been fomented by them in the pursuit of their goals. It is Illuminati that kindled the Revolutionary War in order to weaken the British Empire. And the French Revolution to destroy the French Empire. Napoleonic Wars were a direct result of Illuminati intervention, and were intended to weaken the government of Europe. Since Illuminati created Karl Marx to brainwash the Russia with Communist Party and destroy the royal family. What's more, spread the Communist Party to China, in order to make the Chinese government yield. It is using the Second World War to set up a Chinese Communist Party government to replace Republic of China. It made the population reduction to Chinese people, and killed the elites, those having independent thinking. The religion people. Are tortured and persecuted by Chinese Communist Party. From CCP settling in China until now, especially Falun Gong practitioners in mainland China had been under enormous persecution. Issues never stand in isolation. We need to think, to look inside ourselves. Who is haunting us? Who is saving us? We watched God sacrificed for us without speaking out for Him, and now we watch those faithful hearts sacrificing for us, like Jesus did before. However. We are still hiding, for we are fragile and weak in sensation of justice. So we just watch, watch the devil smuggle children, abuse them, even organ harvest from them. We just see that Trump was suffering the unfairness because he's fighting for people. We just watch, watch the Falun Gong practitioners are organ harvested by CCP. We are hiding from those truths by all excuses. New history will come by all means. After this one, undoubtedly, we all love to survive 
and live in a new history. Thousand years, we searched the master key to unlock all the mysteries and save us in all the tragedies. We cannot help to realize there is always an invisible spiritual existence, a supernatural being, a god, a lord, who will save us before the day of reckoning. Will the Lord be gratified if we learn to discern what is true good from evil, and virtue from vice? Will the Lord mercy us if we breathe righteous thought and find back our divinity?